Awesome. Okay, so welcome guys to the third installment of the Polygon Protocol Governance Session, which has um, just changed its name <laughs> over the last couple of weeks. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Harry. I work on the governance team. Um, and yeah, I'll be leading the call today and guiding you guys through the agenda. So yeah, just in terms of like a quick summary of what we'll be covering, um, the main things are PIP12, um, PIP11, um, and then we'll have a brief overview of what's to come with the kind of downstream Shanghai hard fork. Um, and then, yeah, we'll also be talking about some kind of rough scheduling for upcoming hard forks. So, yeah, thank you guys for take, making the effort to join. I know a lot of you are in different time zones. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys joining. Um, yeah, so before I hand it over uh, to Krishna, who's going to be doing an overview of, of PIP12, um, I'm just going to give you guys a quick reminder on the um, PIP bounty program. So uh, this call is meant to be like a synchronous place for discussions around PIPs, which are polygon improvement proposals, proposals that aim to improve the, you know, the polygon network, essentially. Um, and this is where we deliberate on the technical details uh, and gather kind of technical consensus, peer review um, on, on those proposals. So yeah, we, we launched a program where we'll be giving PIP authors the sum of like of $40,000 over the next 12 months. So yeah, there's some, there's some funding now for PIP authors, which is good. Um, another thing is we recently released a blog post around protocol governance, which kind of outlines our thinking around kind of open source and how it fits into to, to Polygon's protocol governance and, you know, a little bit of our vision of how we see this thing going forward. So yeah, please take a look if you get the chance. Um, another housekeeping thing, uh, we're thinking about doing alternate timing for these calls. So one month we'll do it um, perhaps later in the in the day or earlier in the day. Um, yeah, and we'll alternate those month on month so we can be a bit more inclusive um, for different time zones. And, um, so yeah, I'll be doing, probably doing a temperature check in the Discord channel, so keep an eye out for that. And as well as that, we'll also be moving over to Zoom soon because the um, the visual and audio quality of the recordings of these calls is is not great. So um, yeah, we'll probably be moving over to Zoom. Maybe not for the next call, but definitely for the one after that. So yeah, keep an eye out for that and once more. Um, yeah, and on that note, then I'll hand it over to uh, Krishna, who is going to be doing an overview of PIP twelve. So Krishna, if you're there, it's uh, over to you. Yep, yep, I'm here. Thanks, Harry. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I welcome everyone on behalf of the POS team as well. So it's not usual for our team. I mean, we are. I'm. I'm. I'm uh, my name is Krishna, and I will usually we usually um, handle technical calls. But yeah, governance call is something new for us as well. And a couple of my team members are also here. So we'll be. Uh, what we are here to basically discuss uh, a couple of things regarding some updates. Uh, you know, which we are going to do on the POS network in the upcoming months i can say yeah some of them will take months so yeah in the next few months uh this includes a couple of uh hard folk, hard folk as well maybe like one on heimdall and someone uh, on on board side as well and as you guys already know we have been like in the last call wh whoever was present we introduced pip 10 uh regarding the state sync confirmation which was actually a technical uh, cause you know which caused the 157 block reorg back in january and we identified that there's an issue so yeah, we have actually identified a better solution to that so basically pip 12 is an uh, we can say upgraded version of pip 10 and pratik uh i'll, I'll let pratik uh, discuss more on that um later on that half uh on the overview side i'll first of all i'll present an overview uh, for everyone to get in the context so yeah the first uh major uh hard folk or change which we are eyeing uh right now is milestone implementation because that is something which we are very excited as well as uh you know it's very important for us to test this uh, rigorously because it's very tedious from technical perspective so yeah our current status is uh, i mean from the last uh, in the last call we explained it technically still if we can i'm not sure if we have to again or all manav is here to explain or answer any question if we have regarding milestones but the current status is uh, just to clear uh, for everyone we have started like the, uh, an audit was performed 
for the same, you know, uh, so that we can identify if there is any potential security issue or any bug in the milestone. So right now we are waiting for the reports. The reports are somewhere uh, are some uh, supposed to come next week, somewhere around 24th of May. And assuming that if reports are clean and there is no major issue and might even including including some minor fixes here and there. We might expect to have a hard fork uh, somewhere in the last June, last week of June or early July, uh, which will be actually a hard fork on the Himdal side. Uh, okay, so noted on this is this is not actually a bore hard fork, but an Himdal hard fork. But yeah, there will be a new version of bore to support that Himdal hard fork. Uh, from our side, the status is, uh, it, is it, that it's tested, but we are just waiting for the audit report. And as per the audit report, the hard fork date will be, uh, you know, will be decided. And all the details regarding this is already shared in the PIP. 12 here. I'll I'll share the link quickly. So just to give me a minute. I'm sharing the PIP 11 link. So this is PIP 11. Sorry, because this is what I'm talking about. The second uh, hard fork which we are eyeing in the upcoming few months is the state sync related state sync introducing state sync confirmation hard fork. So that was uh, basically earlier PIP 10, uh, but now we have uh, you know uh, introduced a better version to do it uh, internally and uh, for external communication. Basically, the name for that. Uh, uh changes pip 12 uh Pratik will discuss more about this in a while and uh, and the third uh hard work which we are eyeing is basically upstream changes so you guys might observe that in the board level we have not done upstream changes uh you know for some time but yeah after the shanghai hard fork uh, on the on the get side uh the, we are trying to you know update our board uh, client as well with all the changes whichever are whatever are there so majorly uh the changes uh which will uh we will have in the like we are still in the process, so we know a couple of them. For example, Snap Sync improvements are there. Uh, we will introduce a uh, Pebble DB, which will be you know as an option, or we will, be, will be replacing Level DB going ahead. And as we all know, that Level DB has uh, some DB compaction issues when the size is growing after a certain limit. Uh, we have improvements in tracing and metrics and the optimization on the storage scheme and obviously some of uh, some bug fixes uh, you know regarding the security and all so all these things are still under process i mean the upstream merge is obviously you guys know like it's a big process we are merging uh, resolving conflicts testing them out merging new things testing them out again and again so still this is ongoing but yeah for the next two months or three months uh we have shanghai hard fork officially uh to perform on our board network so these are the two i will say technically three hard forks one on himdal to on board, we, we, we might combine uh, some of them together depending on the status and how we uh, plan ahead. But yeah, uh, okay. I think these these are the overview about the hard fork. Sorry. Okay. Now I think to discuss, I mean, the main agenda is PIP 12 because we already discussed PIP 10 earlier. So to discuss PIP 12, I think Pratik, will you take over it? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Let me share the link for the PIP as well as I can share my screen. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Not yet. I think it's still loading. Let's wait a okay. couple of seconds. Yeah, it's, it's coming okay. up. I think so. Awesome. Okay, um, hi everyone. So, like, as uh, you are aware, like we mentioned this in the last call as well. Like, uh, there was a, a deep reorg uh, on on the network in Feb, I think, and which led to like which was basically uh, caused by one thing leading to other another, and here that thing was basically a bad block error because of which the block propagation got delayed and hence the reorg which was not so big uh, got uh, like a big reorg basically so uh, for this we first introduced a quick solution so basically this was uh, due to uh, the st uh, different number of state sync transactions across different forks so when this fork merges back together uh, while uh, Verifying the incoming chain, uh, the board, uh, like the board, encountered an issue where uh, the incoming chain had different number of state sync transactions uh, than that were being uh, fetched from its Heimdall. So this was because uh, the parameters which uh, gets this state sync transactions from Heimdall were different uh, for a particular. Uh, 
like for a particular block. Uh, and this was different because uh, this, uh, like, basically, there are two parameters used to fetch this transactions from Heimdall. The first is from ID, and the second one is a two, which is a timestamp of a block uh, in the local database, which is basically a sprint length behind. So, for example, uh, let's say we are on block uh, 32 right now, which is the first block of a sprint, and assuming 16 is the sprint length. Uh, it will be uh, like two value will be the timestamp of 32 minus 16, which is basically the 16th block. And this block is fetched from the uh, local database of that particular bore node. No, and like note that this is not fetched from the incoming chain, uh, given that like uh, on different forks, the timestamp of a partic particular block will be different because uh, like they, uh, they they cannot be same because the time to mine can be different on different folks. Now, for this, we uh, like PIP10 introduced a solution basically, which uh, increased, like, which uh, stated that instead of going 16 blocks behind uh, and uh, getting its timestamp, we should uh, go, uh, let's say, 128 blocks behind and take the timestamp uh, because, like, a reorg. Uh, like cannot like we the probability of happening a reorg which is 128 uh, whose uh, depth is 128 blocks is very low therefore this issue uh, will not occur that uh, like that frequently but still this issue can occur if uh, the reorg's length is greater than 128 so instead uh, like so this pip has introduced a, a way uh, where the calculation of two is not dependent on the uh, length of the reorg, but rather uh, we are uh, introducing a way where the value of two will be same across the forks uh, or be, uh, will be same uh, while this fork merges back together where uh, previously we used to get this bad block error. Now, uh, the, uh, the way we are calculating two here is basically we are taking the current block uh, and getting its timestamp and instead of going uh, like like few blocks behind and getting the timestamp of that particular block we are just subtracting a constant time from uh, the current blocks timestamp and this current block is not yet in the database so basically we are no longer looking in the local database for a timestamp of a particular block so if uh, someone is importing a fork so this block will be the this current block will be uh, the one from the incoming chain, but not uh, like not from the uh, local chain. So basically, therefore, the value of two calculated while verifying this chain will be the same uh, as that uh, calculated from uh, as that in the canonical chain. And hence the well and as the value of from ID and to ID is same, Heimdall will return the same uh, number of states in transactions. Uh, and therefore, a uh, bad block won't happen because the number of states in transactions and the transactions are basically the same. So this is the solution. Now, uh, let's look at the implementation. So here again, uh, the only thing which we are adding here is this constant. Now, this will be fixed across the network and therefore this constant uh, will be present in the Genesis file. And again, like, we are keeping it as a, a map so that in the future, if you want to change it or like modify it to let's say 64 or uh, like uh, 200 or two uh, like whatever uh, value, we can just uh, add like we can just do that in the Genesis file instead rather than changing the implementation. So yeah, uh, uh, it will be like this like a, a structure in the Genesis file where this hard fork block will be the block number where, from where this hard fork like this particular implementation will take place which which is basically the hard fork uh, number uh, the block number uh, and 128 is basically the number of seconds uh, basically the delay which we want to give and basically subtract that from the current blocks timestamp and then which is used to calculate the value of 2 now uh, like so the the current implementation is uh, that we get the value of two by uh, from uh, getting the time of a block, which is uh, a sprint length behind the current block block. And this get header function basically takes this block from the database. 
from its local database which is the problem here so this is the current implementation and uh, we propose to change it to something like uh, like if uh, we are post hard fork then we will fetch that delay from the genesis file here for the current block and like in this case it will return 128 and we'll simply do header uh, headers time basically the current blocks time minus uh, the state sync delay which is 128 uh, yeah so basically it is just an if else if it if we are post hard fork do this updated implementation if we are pre hard fork then do what we are currently doing now yeah basically this is the implementation it is very simple uh yeah things to note that uh current sprint length is 16 the states in confirmation delay is 128 so this is not yet final but we are uh confident that 128 second is a uh, ideal if uh like but we are still open for discussion around this so yeah feel free to post your comments on the forum post or like uh yeah basically on the forum post and we will uh, take that up and yeah so uh, uh in pip like in pip 10 we increase the value uh from 16 blocks to 128 blocks but in pip 12 we are increasing the range from 16 blocks to 128 seconds now uh, the like this is pretty easy and simple change and there are no uh, threats uh, around security uh, like regarding this uh, the only thing uh, which will uh, change is that uh, the state sync uh, like the state sync transactions will be delayed by uh, 92 seconds and 92 second is uh, basically calculated by so right now as we have 16 blocks like we go 16 blocks behind the current block and assuming 2.25 seconds as the block time we subtract that from 128 and get 92 seconds so yeah, uh, the state sync transactions will be delayed by 92 seconds, which is not basically, if we look at uh, current uh, state sync transactions, the time to which it takes from uh, coming from the main chain to uh, Heimdall to Bohr, uh, it is like not a significant increase. And as this is uh, a break, like a breaking change, which is not backwards compatible, therefore it will require a hard fork. Yeah, uh, like, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, thanks, Pratik. Yeah, if anybody has any question, they can ask here. Or the pep is, I think, live. So they can comment there. Basically, uh, the main motive, uh, in if I have to explain in two lines, is to remove the dependency on uh, block, you know, any block. Like earlier, we were trying to increase the block difference from 16 to 64 or 128 by adding, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you say, a number. Uh, what was the number, uh, Pratik? Uh, what we are calling it exponential, yeah, exponent. So we are trying to increase, but later we realized that uh, while we are still dependent on blocks, this thing can still occur if uh, you know, like for example, if we have if we would have increased it from 16 to 128, and there is a reorg more than 128, that same situation would have still arrived. Okay, like uh, because two nodes which are which are on different reorgs, we still get different time, two different values. Yeah, multiply. Sorry, my bad. So. So we decided that we have to remove this dependency uh, on block uh, because when there are when there's a reorg and two different nodes are under two different reorgs, uh, then obviously their block uh, time and their block calculation and all like will differ. So we wanted to remove that. So that's why we are now going to use the incoming current block, uh, whatever we have uh, from the incoming fork, and we subtract some common time factor out of it so that even if there is a reorg happening, I think this will still give the same two value for all the nodes across. All the reorgs, whoever are Im even importing the new new ones, so that's the. I mean, uh, just a quick summary for the pip twelve. That's why we changed it. I mean, if you compare ten to twelve, that's the major difference. Okay, and I'm sorry we don't have any pip for Shanghai hard fork yet, but yeah, that's one of the hard uh, one again one thing which we'll be doing. Uh, and we already have also have pip eleven for milestone uh, do we have to uh Harry, just a quick question do we have to uh explain pip 11 do you like we should we, we should go over it again or i mean it's up to you i, I think we, we explained it on the last uh on the last call but yeah maybe it'd be good to do kind of a summary of like where the where the order is like what testing uh needs to be in place uh, as well i think that would probably be helpful to be honest 
Sure. Uh, okay. Manav, uh, can you do a quick review of PIP 11 as well? Um, yeah, for sure. Just a second. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Um, is it visible? Yeah. Not yet. It's there. Mm -hmm. We can see you're presenting, but the screen is still not visible. Okay, let me be sure. Yeah. We'll be quick this time. Only uh, just a quick review, and then we'll. Uh, we are anyway. We already shared while manner sharing. So this thing is uh, on the technical front. Already implementation has been done, and we are. Uh, you know, we have started an audit almost last year, like last month, April, and the reports will be again. I'm rephrasing. Uh, will be uh, will be should be there by 24th or 25th of May, and uh, yeah, if there are nothing serious, maybe in one month after that, uh, June end or July first week. We might go ahead with this if everybody approves, obviously. Okay, yeah, over to you, Manav. Yeah, uh, thanks, Krishna. Uh, yeah, so uh, basically, just to like quickly summar summarize the implementation of milestones in a couple of minutes. It's basically uh, the, like the goal is to uh, have deterministic finality via milestones. So uh, because of the dual architecture or like dual client architecture of Polygon POS, which is the Bohr chain and the Heimdall chain, where the Heimdall chain runs on a tendermint consensus, which has fast finality, or I would say a single block finality. So uh, basically Milestone leverages those properties of the tendermint chain to make sure that it we, we achieve finality faster on, on the Bohr chain, which is the main block producing layer of the Polygon POS network, right? Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, also just to clear out some uh, things um, that currently it's probabilistic until a very high number, which is the last checkpoint. So the average checkpoint is of of length 512 board blocks. So currently uh, it's it's kind of probabilistic until that point. Uh, of course, uh, so basically that is the number of blocks or or the block confirmation, which which is like the like recommended theoretically. Of course, like uh, a lot of people in the community have been using a lower number or some something close to two fifty six uh, for now to to rely on finality. Um, but yeah, like the current status of uh, the probabilisticness is until the last checkpoint technically. So yeah, uh, by of course introducing milestones, the user experience for those dApps will of course improve because uh, it gives them this finality much faster as compared to the current checkpoint thing. So consider milestones as a sub checkpoint, uh, as as mentioned in the struct over here. I mean, and and like the length for now is fixed at sixteen blocks. Uh, Sorry, 16 blocks is the confirmation, but yeah, the length of the milestone is like 12 more blocks. So uh, it, it the thing, the difference with checkpoint and milestone is that checkpoints are submitted to L1. Hence, uh, the frequency of checkpoints is has to be kept by by keeping the L1 gas fees in mind. But for milestones, they only are committed at the Heimdall layer. Uh, once they achieve two by three plus one consensus on the tendermint, so so the frequency like we can uh, tune tune around and uh, increase the frequency of those milestones, uh, making it uh, reach finality faster. So uh, yeah, uh, of course, like a, a lot of technical nitty gritties have been mentioned in the paper itself. Uh, so yeah, uh, basically there is there is a whole process of uh, whole process which the validator goes through when proposing a milestone and the corresponding board nodes vote on the on each of those milestones and once the milestone is confirmed they basically uh, fetch those milestones in the board layer 
and try to follow or try to stick to that particular fork. So an ideal fork is the fork which contains milestones. And in, in cases where it tries to, you know, fetch blocks from other folks, it will very quickly figure out whether it's on a wrong fork or not, because someone cannot attempt to uh, throw out a very long fork, which, uh, which does not have a milestone. So like that won't be possible. Uh, which is currently possible uh, for now, but yeah, like with milestones, it won't be possible. So it's like uh, you are like you have some goalposts which you are continuously moving ahead, uh, and this goalpost is milestones for more. Uh, uh, and yeah, basically consider milestones as like a, a whitelisting feature of board. So board continuously whitelist these milestones and use leverages those things when it tries to connect to peers when it tries to import forks from peers and so on uh, and of course like with that uh, we also like it will also include a finality tag which is quite similar to what ethereum currently has uh, basically you can provide uh, you can call a method like get block by number with with a tag finalized and it would uh, give you the last finalized block uh, and of course, like this also applies to all all such RPC methods which have this finalized tag. So, uh, so yeah, of course, again, uh, as Krishna mentioned, like this involves a hard fork on the Hemda layer um, because it introduces a new type of transaction, which is which we call as the milestone transaction. And like, of course, it has a separate round of votings and everything, so it requires a hard fork. Uh, and, and in order to leverage those milestones, Bohr will also be requiring a security upgrade uh, along with, but like it won't be a high fork uh, per se, but yeah, it, it would be like uh, the validators will need to upgrade Bohr along with the Hymda as well. Yeah, and, and sharing my two cents on, on the testing front. So, uh, like of course uh, we haven't mentioned those things in the VIP itself, uh, but uh, we have kind of performed too broadly classify. We have performed four kind of testing. Uh, one is of course the unit test. So we have tried to include unit test for every module which has been modified or introduced newly in the board layer, and of course the Himda layer. And we have tried to uh, mock a lot of components in order to create different kind of scenarios to make sure that the milestone feature works well. Uh, another is end-to-end -end test, which is we have, we have attempted doing a lot of long running tests where we are mocking a couple of components in Bohr. Uh, we are uh, explicitly uh, managing managing the sprints and everything and the validator set. Uh, and we are explicitly whitelisting some milestones to see how it works under different cases. Uh, the third kind of testing, of course, is uh, a lot of manual testing has been uh, also involved because, uh, like again, uh, we have tried to uh, play around with a lot of attack vectors and try to replicate them how they work currently and how they would work with the milestone feature enabled. So that is it. And and last, like finally, we have a, we have a tool which is I think also publicly available, which is Matic CLI. So it, it allows you to spin up DevNets and try tries to and like it allows you to uh, play around with them uh, like it uh, we we named it as a black box testing for milestones so we uh, we spin up a lot of DevNets using the that particular tool and conducted a few tests a uh, few simulation based tests uh, to also be more confident. So yeah, like those are the kind of testings which we've been performing. Um, so yeah, that's it. And ultimately, an audit over over it. <laughs> yeah, of course. External audit is also going on. So yeah, we'll we'll. I think once we have the reports, uh, I'm not sure about the official process, but I think as for the reports, the details will be shared out uh, publicly as well when whenever we have uh, when we'll, we'll we will release this right. Yeah. Yeah, that's it uh, from our side. Uh, guys, uh, let us know if you have missed anything, Harry, or anything else we should cover. No, no, I don't think you missed anything. I just, uh, if there are any questions, 
uh, about any of those, either of those pips, then please, yeah, feel free. We've got a little bit of time left, so yeah, the, it's an open floor for the next five minutes if anyone, anyone wants to ask any questions. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, um, can I ask you something? Um, you know, for the, you know for the uh, the milestones, um, you know when you said it, it'll go up to a hundred, and then when it increases, it'll delete the previous. What happens to the state? Uh, like, do you have any more info on like a uh, uh, as I understand, it, it, it will require less disk space, right? So, do you have any more info on on, on what happens on, on on the size of the disks? Um, yeah, I could take that. So, I I don't think it uh, really affects the the underlying state which is being stored in in the level DB. Uh, there are, I would say, there are a couple of things which are uh, related to milestone which are being stored in memory. And uh, there's only two of the keys which we store in this for for miles, milestones, which which keeps updating once the mile, once the chain progresses. So it it does not really affect those uh, like the underlying state. To be honest, yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, basically, less RAM during the processing part. But uh, okay, that's cool. Awesome. Thank you, Dimitri. Um, yeah, any other questions? If not, we can, uh, yeah, we can probably wrap up a bit early. Um, hey, so I, I had a question for you guys around um, timing in the hard forks and w was just wondering, um, is there a plan in terms of phasing? So it, you guys, the, the presentations were great and you gave a lot of great information about the timing of what we can expect in terms of the audits and then the, the time to sort of release an implementation after. Is there an interim step where something is going to go on to Mumbai first before it gets released in hard forked or what's the sort of timeline? Yes, I understood your question. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, obviously. Uh, so whatever we do, uh, whatever hard fork we'll do, obviously we'll go to Mumbai first. I mean, uh, there will be no, uh, neither an upgrade or not a hard fork which will go to mainnet first. Okay, mm -hmm. neither I'm, I'm, I'm saying very in general, like whatever we upgrade, either it be Himdal or Bohr or a hard fork or a non hard fork even release, uh, everything goes to Mumbai first. So the timing which I was saying is obviously uh, inclusive of that. So whatever we do on Mumbai, like the ideal scenario is, let's say we deploy uh, like Monday this week on Mumbai. So, mm -hmm. and, if, and we observe for a couple of days, let's say three days, four days, or maybe a week. Then after that, we'll give one more week uh, for the mainnet hard plastic. Like X week, we do Mumbai, then X plus two week, we do on mainnet. That's like 14, at least a 14 days difference. Ideally, will be there between Mumbai and mainnet hard fork. That I can say for you. Right. So, okay. yeah, and whatever we do, we'll, we'll, we'll come on Mumbai first. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, um, for Mumbai, we might give a shorter, you know, um, a frame, let's say uh, four or five days or seven days at max. Like, we cannot give 14 days for Mumbai. So, let's say we say on Monday and we might ask you to update by, you know, Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. That okay in four days there is a hard fork in Mumbai because Mumbai is something we 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 have to do it quickly. But yeah, for mainnet we'll give you ample amount of time. We can assure that. And once it is on Mumbai, people will anyway know that okay, one whatever is coming on Mumbai most probably will hit the mainnet in next couple of weeks anyway. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I just wanted to share one thought. I just had, uh, so I'm really glad for all the uh, external guys uh, joining here. I mean, as a developer from the PS time, this is, uh, I want to say thank you because as a developing team, we are developing um, these solutions for you uh, internally. And we, uh, I'm really proud of my team for doing a great job, but yeah, always the external contribution and questions and suggestions and are always welcome. Like we feel great as a team, you know, as a POS team, I personally feeling really good at that. Uh, uh, whatever number of people we have from the external, you know, other guys apart from Polygon here, I really appreciate your uh, comments, your thoughts, uh, and yeah, what if we can increase this going forward? Uh, that is a really good, what do you say, motivation and a feel good factor for our team as well. Thank you guys for joining. Like, I mean, I we really appreciate uh, you guys taking out your time and joining us to listen all, uh, you know, saying all those technical stuff. Awesome. Lovely words, Krishna. Yeah, echoing that as well. Um, okay. Uh, so if there's no other questions, then I think we can wrap it up a little bit early. Still got 20 minutes. So 
yeah, I think there's no other questions. We can wrap it up. Um, in terms of the next call, it's going to be on the uh, 15th of June. And so, yeah, keep your eye on the um, GitHub project management folder. And if you have any agenda points, then feel free to add those in for the next call. Um, then, yeah, kind of one final note. I don't know if we have any validators on the call right now, but so obviously there's quite a few hard forks in the in the pipeline potentially. Um, and you know, one of the things that you know we're thinking about is obviously like which hard forks are going to be, you know, going together. Which updates are going to be clubbed into you know one hard fork essentially. And you know, in order to you know do that efficiently, we wanted to get some feedback from from validators about kind of what how they see the difficulty of implementing hard forks on Boar and Heimdall. You know, from our point of view, it seems as though Heimdall hard forks are, are kind of simpler easier to implement and maintain once they've been launched. But yeah, I mean, if there's any validators on the call, then uh, feel free to weigh in. But if not, I'll probably put something in the Discord so you guys can can do like a vote or, or kind of just leave your thoughts in there about which you think is more difficult. Okay, well, yeah, I'll put something in the Discord then uh, for the validators, and um, yeah, we can go from there. Awesome. Okay, well, I think that's everything. So, um, yeah, we can wrap it up. As always, guys, thank you for joining. I appreciate you taking time out your day to join this call. Um, and yeah, have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you next month. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Harry. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.